Welcome to Starfield Explorers, the podcast where we dive deep into Bethesda Game Studios' most ambitious RPG. You got to do it with me, Clay. Of all time. Are you not going to do it with me? Of all time. I'm your host, Antonio, a.k.a. Hypecaster. You can find me and the rest of Team Megadads at megadads.org or Megadads on YouTube. We want to hear from you. Be part of the show and leave a comment or a question under the show posted on YouTube. Starfield Explorers is available wherever you get your podcasts. I'm joined by my co-pilot and best bud, Clay Howard. Clay, say hi to the people. Good morning, people. Welcome to outer space. Here we are in our spaceship. It's it's canon. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The best part of being in space would be uh, like where you get to like pee and poo and you just send it out the chute because they do that still. I'm pretty sure. Right. You just like and it goes out and immediately like freezes. You don't have to worry about it. Disrespect. Like if there were if there were aliens just seeing us like do that, like wouldn't that be just super disrespectful? It's like, look at that. They're just leaving their sh- on the f-ing sidewalk. Space like, is, space is so vast that would not even be anything. <sighs> they, <laughs> they said that about the oceans, Dave, and now it's full of plastic. That's all I have to say. Speaking of, I am joined by the Navigator himself, King of the Cosmos, Guru of Galaxies, far and wide, Big D himself, David Jones. David, how are you? Doing all right. <laughs> Hanging in there, living the dream, you know, all those things. Yeah. David, I can't thank you enough for joining us. He's sacrificing everybody. He's hungry. Mm-hmm. He's had a long day, but he's podcasting with me and for you talking about Starfield. I'm going to be completely honest with you, everybody. We've played a lot of Starfield, and spoiler alert, we're getting a little bit burned out. It's just that type of game, but we have played a lot. And we've liked a lot, and we have a lot of thoughts, so let's talk about it. But first, we like to do a little Get to Know You segment. This is our Lightspeed segment, and in our Lightspeed segment, we ask a question of me and my co-host. But we kick it off by saying, David, engage the hyperdrive! Aye, aye, sir. Engaging. Oh, I feel so engaged. I'm like, I'm like this. I, I started the show with low energy, but now it's just going straight up. Let's go. This might be the best podcast I've ever done. Oh, absolutely. For Bar sure. set. Bar <laughs> set. Lightspeed segment question today is, what game that you've played had really excellent pacing? It was like the perfect length. Perfect length. A lot of talk lately, right, about should a game be value-packed and giving you hundreds of hours. I haven't had time for something like that since I was, like, 14. Like, I just don't have the time anymore. Uh, I'll go first on this one. I played um, Prey, Arcane, um, a beautiful game. It's like an adventure action set in space on a space station slight horror elements but really it's just like a thriller game and it is awesome i played it two credits and it didn't overstay its welcome it had me going story wise and you it's like a kind of a metroidvania ish but it's fully 3d like but you unlock different areas of the space station just a mystery unfolds it was awesome i really liked it um, I'm going to look up the time to beat in just a second to get the actual play time that it usually happens, but really well paced throughout, seriously. And then um, you could probably do like a completionist thing and unlock all the skills and all that, but with like, I think there might be a new game plus. I didn't do any of that. Um, David, any game that you played you thought was perfect? Perfect. Link? Like completely perfect. Zero flaws. Nothing. No, he's no he's just about, something you really pacing, liked. Like, this was like, good. Perfect pacing. length, pacing. perfect pacing. Yeah, something you, probably something you rolled credits on because mm-hmm. it really kept you engaged. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's several different ways to look at it because, like, pacing can, you know, because sometimes games can 
I can play a game, engage till credits, but then I think about it later on. And like, I spent 150 hours in that game. Was that good pacing? I enjoyed it, but a lot of people yeah. will not. Um, well, for it to keep you engaged, mm. then yeah, the pacing has yeah. to be good. I mean, it was longer, but you didn't get like grind it out and bored so. yeah i mean for shorter games i always found like like the naughty naughty dog games were like really perfect for what they were like stuff like uncharted and last True. of us they always keep you engaged and there's this kind of nice where it's that sort of like 16 to 20 hour length where it, it you don't feel like you got ripped off but it's not so long that it overstays it's welcome for that type of game um and then there's yeah. also been like 100%. yeah really massive 100 hour jrpgs like persona that i never got tired with and sunk way too much of my life in and those also i'd say have a really good pacing because they keep you engaged the whole time though some people might disagree with me there but i i thought i i was engaged um no when a game is really good, you just want more. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Like, like I wish it didn't. Yeah, you have that sort <laughs> of post good game depression. Um, yeah. <laughs> it happens. It happens way less it to does, me now. No. I know what now you're saying. They, I laugh yeah, for it most hurts. AAA games nowadays, it's just like you play a bit, you move on to something else, and then maybe you'll swing back to it later. And it's almost like this sort of circular cycle of like going through your AAA games and playing it a little bit and eventually rolling credits, but it's getting rarer and rarer where I sit down with a single title, play nothing but that game until credits, and call it good. It doesn't happen very much anymore. I, I've always wondered the exact stats, but basically it's kind of known now. Like, people don't roll credits usually. Um, people just, you know, start games and never really finish them. I'm one of those people. I hardly ever beat anything. Clay, any game that you think is uh, perfectly paced or really good length yeah i'll go retro on this one i'm gonna say Star Fox 64 uh it's a great oh, game okay it, it's easy to beat it's easy to get to the credits i remember as a kid being able to beat that game uh there's a lot of variation in that game uh whereas going from the snes version where you're mostly in a plane uh this one you get to be in a tank and uh there's a couple other you know different things there's uh, rail like levels on rails. There's ones where you're kind of free roaming and, and stuff. So they change things up just enough. Uh, there's uh, additional characters and villains who kind of come and go, and uh, it just keeps things interesting. But then after you beat the game or while you're playing the game, there's these branching paths that you can go off, and so you could beat the game one way and turn around and find these new things to play, and you unlock different levels that you couldn't access the first time or didn't know how to access. And so there's just a lot more replayability to it, but overall the pacing is just really good. And um, yeah, just really fun to play. It's an easy one to pick up and just jump right in. You know, it's, it's one thing to put Ocarina of Time in it and like really devote some time to like get back into that. Whereas like this Star Fox, you can just kind of get in it and you can play for half an hour and you know, beat three or four levels and, and just have a great time with it. So that's my choice. No, I mean, I think you're totally right. That is a game, Star Fox 64, that I just kept beating. Like, I would go through. Um, there Was there some, like, time trial aspect to it? it? Did it give you a rating or something at then? I remember it would, like, show the different, like, planets that you went through. What stats does it give you? It must give you something because I remember shooting for something. Anyway, but the branching paths, it, it, it was excellent. Um, Star Fox 64, according to time to beat dot, or sorry, how long to beat dot com, credit where credits due, uh, takes two hours to beat the main story. Nine and a half hours is the completionist runtime. Uh, David, when you mentioned Naughty Dog, I knew you were talking about something like The Last of Us Part One. Uh, like, fantastic. 14 hours to go through the main story. And then um, if you do main and sides, it's like 17, you know, collect everything, 23 hours. And then pray, 16 hours. So right along the same. Um, I, like, I think that's where a good single player experience is. 12 to, you know, maybe 18 hours-ish. 
seems like a sweet spot, yeah. um, at least the way that we've experienced I think, it. I think so it depends right. on the genre, too, for what you're going. For for those really linear story-based games, I think going much longer than that feels like a chore. But I also mm-hmm. think for, yeah, 100%. for obviously huge RPGs, I think you would be, you would not be happy if that was 16 hours. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. 100%. 100%. Um, that was great. Getting to know you. I love it. Um, breaking it up again for a segment really quick. We want you to leave your comments and questions on the posts on YouTube. We have a post here from a listener, a uh, little reader mail. Uh, at Keister1169 says, Hey, I met you at 2DCon, liked and subbed. Hope to see you blow up with Starfield's release. Keister1169, thank you so much for listening. So, um, Adam, one of the mega dads, went to 2DCon in Minnesota and he did a little panel, like mini show thing, and had fun with the people there. 2D Con has artists, it's centered around video games, it has a bunch of fun stuff, family friendly every year in the, um, what do they call it, the Tri-Cities, Three Cities area, whatever. I haven't been myself yet, but I plan to go um, maybe next year, so 2D Con, look it up, it's in the Minnesota area, and very nice people there. There was another guy who um, came up and talked to us that... I've been watching, he does streams online, and uh, we're going to be hearing more from him in the Mega Dads content, Um, you know, guesting and, you know, um, interacting more with the team. So there's a lot of people interacting with us, so we just want to thank you all for listening. Today, we have an exciting topic. Now, you know, we've taken it slow, but we're going to pick up the pace. Right now, I need you to know that we're going into spoiler territory now, into everything that we're talking about. We've already kind of discussed it that we've played like 30 40 50 hours of this game so we're getting into it we'll try not to spoil anything super major or anything like that but we're going to be talking about the experience of playing the game and sharing more openly our thoughts of what we like didn't like etc let's get into it today's topic is the skills and stuff like that it's the lifeblood of these games it's what you're able to unlock and do and pull you forward and say earn that xp unlock some more so let's talk the good and what we recommend the bad what we regret choosing and any other thoughts my i mean i have a lot of opinions on this uh there's a lot of different things um i will say first that's why we're doing this let's go First off, I was very uh, confused by how this worked as far as you had to unlock so many in a different section before you could move on to other uh, abilities, right? Remember that when when you first unlock? Yeah, they have tiers. Right, but but you don't have to go one tier and then unlock a bunch on the next tier and then go down to the next. Like you just have to get so many in an area and then you can do any of them all the way down to the bottom ones you can yeah. jump and i didn't know that and so i kept i was like unlocking stuff on the first tier thinking i had to when mm. i could have i don't know i don't know what the minimum is you have to have before you can use the rest of them but so that was kind of annoying that took me a minute to figure out uh one thing i do like about this i like that each one of your abilities you have to uh it gives you a challenge with it that you have to do in order to uh, rank it up basically and you can do up to four rankings on each one and so you can't just unlock one go play for a little bit and then hit and then do it again you have to do the thing that it makes you do it's kind of a fun like it's almost like a like a daily challenge on like a battle royale or something i thought that was kind of unique i enjoyed that uh, most of mine are combat related uh, i've got three in science only one in tech which is my backpack and one in social which is the commerce one so most of mine are in physical and combat right now um not a whole lot of interest in doing the tech ones even though that's the stuff that makes your ship really cool um and all that i don't know it's just it wasn't as uh, a priority to me but there is a part of me deep down that wants to unlock all of these and it definitely takes time like I feel like I should have more of these unlocked by now, but I just don't. And so, uh, but there's a drive and a desire to want to do it, but I've kind of made it my priority to make my weapons 
really powerful uh, to be. I'm, I'm four out of four on, on uh, weightlifting, which is, you know, your carry capacity. That was very important for me. Tony, I know that was for you as well. Uh, oh, only other thing I want to mention too, uh, the fitness perk uh, was buggy and broken for... Uh, mm. it, it was working well at the beginning. It's one where you have to use up your oxygen uh, so many times uh, to be able to yep. get more oxygen. And uh, I had to go online and find out that because it was working and then it wasn't. And what uh, the fix that I found that the internet told me was if you go on your ship while you're in space and you just run in your ship in space, it works. And so I literally just had to sit there and grind running into a wall and just running in place for 20 minutes Whoa. to get it to work. I don't know if they've patched it at this point, but it was just kind of an annoying thing where it took me a while. I was like, I should have leveled this up by now. And it already seemed like a lot of times that you had to uh, run out of oxygen. It's, uh, I think it was like 20 or something for the first one. It's 50 for the second. I don't know. I probably won't level it up again, but um, just, just something I observed where it was, it was kind of broken. So, that's some uh, that's some overview thoughts though for me. Um yeah, I mean you bring up a good point about the the tier system. So you're right. It's like slices of a cake. So you have to like spend skill points in one of the major sections of the of the skill tree. So it's physical, social, combat, science and tech. And then if you're in the first slice the first tier of physical skills it says spend three before you can unlock tier two but should you decide in tier two it says okay spend three more skills you you may say okay well let me spend three points in the second you know slice of the cake but you don't have to if you start investing in just the first tier it will unlock the third, fourth, fifth tier because it's counting the sum total of the skills that you've invested in that part of the tree. So as long as you're spending points anywhere in physical, the next tier unlocks. It's it's a little bit weird. It, I think generally the tutorials for every system in the game are a bit lacking. And yeah, I, I felt like it was a bit odd. You bring up the fact that for some of these skills you have to perform the actions in order to unlock the next rank so there's a skill in each tier right so let's just say in tier one you have physical skill fitness so the four levels if you invest one point you get 10 percent more oxygen two skill points unlocks the next level which is 20%, then there's 30%. But in order to even unlock the next one, they don't just let you do it back to back. You have to use that skill in order to unlock the privilege of spending another skill point in that skill. So for fitness, like you said, you had to run. I did it the hard way. I was like, I need to um, do the weightlifting and I need to run with a kind of you have to be kind of over encumbered basically and run around so you're like body training so there's i guess it's kind of cool but i just i was running around everywhere getting tired and just naturally i would just unlock the ability to, to invest in it again and i just decided to do that so i don't know nothing too amazing about it but also not very compelling like toward the end i kind of have my wish list of what things were changed but yeah an odd system overall uh david anything that you liked or any comments about the skill system period you having Um, fun with that was it pulling you along it it really wasn't a huge motivator for me and i was a little bit annoyed that like there was a lot of just very basic things that you had to put a point in to even get like the jetpack and stuff like that so essentially my strategy was is I just went through the level one of all the first row things. I put at least one point in everything to make sure I wasn't feeling like I was missing anything. And then if there for the second tier rows, I just tried to be a little bit more targeted and put stuff into like weapons and health, carrying, carry weight, stuff like that. Um, the stuff that annoys me the most. <laughs> um, but absolutely, most of it just felt like 
stress, like relieving a stress on a certain thing that was annoying me rather than something was like, this is cool, you know? Um, so it was more of just like, it feels more like a replacement for like having, and we talked about that before, there isn't really like actual stats. It's like this system is more of like a replacement just for stats. So it's, it, it, it makes things better, but it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't really feel like cool. It's just like, I am progressing through the game and getting more powerful through putting points in here as opposed to having like a fallout number system, I guess, to me. I, I didn't think of it that way, but you're spot mm -hmm. on. Like that makes that makes total sense. You're increasing your carry mm -hmm. capacity or whatever, which would have just been a point of strength. So it's kind of serving like a dual purpose, yeah. but not really being great at either. Um, very interesting. And then you also were talking about how the motivation of it pulling you through in these games, unlocking that next skill point was like huge, uh, mostly because there was something interesting that you wanted to unlock and or typically in games like this it would dramatically dramatic dramatically dramatically it would dramatically alter the gameplay and that's really the ones that i wanted to go to you bring up a great point that a a huge unique thing of this game was you could play for like a hundred hours and if you didn't invest a point in a particular thing you don't get that gameplay system you don't get that ability at all uh stealth is a good one so if you don't put one single point in stealth you never get a stealth meter um sneaking is i mean i don't sneak at all like period i haven't invested in it yet and I wonder if, you know, how, how that system would be, but I have other things I have my eye on. So now I just don't get that, that gameplay element. Um, I think clay, you mentioned the rocket pack, huge, uh, talking about things I liked the, the jump pack is absolutely fantastic. They really nailed the feeling of, uh, floating in the air. A lot of the environments and things are. Uh, deal with lower gravity and hovering and there's not platforming but like it's helpful to go into the air in combat or exploration and you know you're breaking your fall from high uh from higher areas when you jump down i really liked it it was one of the first things that i invested in and i absolutely do not regret it i've maxed it out and i thought it was really great i mean my it's probably my top three suggestions is if you're playing the game you really have to get into it and and unlock the the jetpacks there's different types of jetpacks that boost you up in either a short burst or one big shot of energy and boosts you way high um that's a little bit harder to control so yeah i would say that that's a huge thing to unlock um right away um anything else clay that you would say besides uh, that's boost pack training so you can utilize boost packs if you invest a point if you can't don't you dare think about doing it at all because it will cost you yeah. and then it lets you um boost more and further with the limited fuel that you have i'll say one thing about it that's bad the fourth level of it says doubles your previous bonuses so it's supposed to recharge your fuel more quickly yeah but if you um, click on it spend less fuel it was not good but if you click on uh oh you're talking about the fourth one i guess there yeah, is the a fourth level i got i get what you're saying so the cool thing is did you talk about the bottom level of of these the like the yellowish green level uh at the bottom of each section did you talk about that no, I actually. Uh, have you looked at those? Taxi cab confession. I actually have not gotten to the lowest. Well, deepest, I haven't either. Uh, but check it out though. They're, they're all them. they're all gnarly. And so if you go to the tech one where the uh, where the uh, jet pack is, if you go to that, it's called boost uh -huh. assault training. Combat training with boost packs allows for more shock and awe tactics. Rank one, nearby enemies take damage when you boost and have a chance to catch on fire. And then rank four is while oh. hovering, time slows down and the world moves 70% slower. So there's these really crazy oh. beefed up uh, 
abilities that you get on the bottom row if you rank them up. And so there's some really gnarly stuff in some of these. Some of them are fun. Some of them yeah. are a little more straightforward. Um, it just depends. Now, that being said... That sounds exciting. Yeah, it's yeah. something to look forward to. That being said, I guess the only other thought I have on the, on the skills... And maybe I'm, I shouldn't compare this against Fallout. I just don't feel like there's a lot of fun, creative, unique ideas on here like there is in the Fallout series. Um Obviously, Fallout's known for being kind of quirky and having interesting things, but uh, I just remember th there being abilities for, you know, killing people in their sleep, or you do more damage against females, or whatever. It's just like, they had, like, more unique abilities. These seem a little more straightforward, and, a l and maybe they're just trying to play it serious. Maybe they're not trying to take themselves too serious, or maybe they are trying to take themselves serious and not be, like silly about it but I, I guess i'm just missing some of the uniqueness that would make it and maybe you get some of that on the bottom um but i just i i, I wish there was a little bit more some stuff that was a little more specific and uh and focused on funny fun different things to do that's all 100 percent. i i totally agree with you i felt like um there were things in like just as an example, you know, the Fallout series that were much more interesting and really kept me, you know, trying to level. It, it made it like a, the little carrot at the end of the stick that made me keep pushing through the game. It, if you say to me that, because you've played like, what, like 60 hours, something like that, um, that you've not had the privilege of unlocking any of the lowest or the most advanced tiers, right? You you really haven't gotten to that super cool stuff after that long. I mean, we just talked about in the opening segment that we've rolled credits on games that were, you know, 15, 20 hours. Like, that's kind of greedy, is it not? Like, that you don't get to dabble in that yet? I mean, I'm, I'm super far away from that just because of the way that I've, you know, the way that I've, unlock things in different parts of the tree too, trying to spread it out because you have to invest in that section uh in the physical or in the, the the different areas so i'm far away from any of that and that's kind of sad um something that really i loved in like fallout was the uh, mysterious stranger so out of nowhere someone would come in <laughs> And just yeah, like dude. help you yes. out of nowhere, mysterious stranger would finish off targets and vats, oh, and so it was in the luck tree. I love the luck. Like as you invest stats into your luck stat, you had the privilege of unlocking different perks. So you had to have your stat up, and then you got to invest into it. And I just loved the luck, and there there was no equivalent in this game at all that had anything to do with obviously stats and ob and nothing to do with like luck or anything like that I, I love killing people at night like you can um do all sorts of things and a lot of it's similar when i do look at the list a lot of it is you know carry weight you know um damage with explosives you know damage with this weapon and that and it has that but it doesn't have that like really that draw that special thing to it david anything that you just didn't understand why it's even a skill or or something that you invested in that you later regretted well i mean kind of what you said before about most of the things that were just unlocked like stealth like is that that shouldn't be a skill that's a basic feature so a lot of those shouldn't you even been percent really Preach. Yeah. um I'm trying to remember what they are some of the like just ship ones like i didn't invest much into I kind of wish there was other ways to like get better at like like ship without having to like sacrifice other aspects of my character to do because I feel like I have not put much into my ship and I can barely do ship missions still um, because I'm not investing yep. in that. Um, so I get that there's yep. supposed to be choices Absolutely. you have to make, um, but what are you going to do? <laughs> if there's if there's any like essential skills um again my top five the one is the jetpack everything else has to do with ships 
there are gameplay altering perks in the area that give you advanced um, ways to be more maneuverable in your ship. They're called uh, targeting control systems, so it helps you lock on to enemies. Um, piloting, it helps you utilize ship thrusters. This is a game changer when it comes to like turning, which is incredibly beneficial in dogfighting. And you do this quite a bit. I mean, when you're, you can be like ambushed at any time and the fights are very difficult if you don't have it. Uh, ballistic weapon systems for your ship that increases damage and recharge um, of your of your ballistic weapons. It's just, these are essential, but they're behind the paywall of skills. Uh, Clay, anything that you would really recommend or anything you regret? Um... Uh... And I did put the refresh list in the chat too, if you want to yeah, take a I mean, look I'm at it. I'm looking at them um, right now. I mean, not not too much. Uh, I did I did think the commerce one, you know, bringing those pricing the pricing down on things, I think is worth it. Uh, I was happy I did mm -hmm. that one. I mean, not that you would know if it was cheaper if you didn't do it otherwise, but uh, and then I also did a, <laughs> a faster reload on my pistols because. Uh, some of my guns are really slow reloads, and that made a big difference, too. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you're going to invest in any of the weapons and you really like one, then you go to the uh, combat skills, and it lets you say, okay, you like the laser weapons? Increase damage. You know, It's just, again, this really weird thing where the first three tiers of lasers, which is what I really wanted to get into, is increased damage, increased damage, increased damage. Like, And then the last one is chance to set someone on fire. And it's like, yeah, like give me that from like at least tier two and have it be at like 5% chance. And then in the next tier, give me like 20% chance. And then you know, have it keep going up. Like, they're very, in my opinion, stingy with some of, like, the unlocks here. It was really weird. Um, the other one that I thought was huge, because I did commerce as well, there's so much loot in the game, I wanted it to be worth it, what I was doing. So increasing your sell price and decreasing your buy price at vendors was kind of a no-brainer. Um, it's It just felt like something that was important. There's um, a whole tier um, that's dedicated to crafting and only the only place that you can find crafting and really unlock the uh, crafting tables because there's a lot of different ones. You have to invest skills in order to take advantage of it. This game is full of loot uh, in the resources category that I've been collecting for hours and hours and hours but I don't want to invest in those skills, so I can't do crafting. Um, their weapon engineering requires investment in order to uh, create and research weapon mods. And, you know, there's other spacesuit design is another skill related to crafting. And in order to do that, you're investing precious perk points precious skill points to do that have you all invested at all in the crafting aspect it's called science skills where a lot of these things are found nope not at all except for the initial ones in the level one tier i put one point into them but i barely touch crafting i think the only time i have is for the the side quest where you make the space math <laughs> it's about it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's sad because I loved weapon crafting in like Fallout games, uh, enchanting in Elder Scrolls. Like, I, I was all about that. And I would try to enchant like unique weapons and make them stronger. I haven't been able to dabble in this at all. And there's so much loot. There seems to be things to craft and upgrade. But, and then I have no idea if they're worth it. Like, there's not like even a description ahead of time that really 
pulls you in, you know, that says, hey, this is, this might be worth it. Clay, have you done any crafting? Yeah, I've been working on the weapon stuff, trying to figure out how to do modifications. So I kind of hit that wall that you hit where I was like, oh, this is kind of annoying. But I probably won't ever do the space suit one, but I'll, I'll definitely keep working on the weapon one. So that's about it, though. Best case scenario is that they're geniuses and they have hidden some really cool gameplay stuff like once you unlock and craft and upgrade these things that we haven't seen yet that's best case scenario it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case there's something called a perk called special projects you can research experimental projects at the research lab you can craft rare manufactured and components in the industrial workbench exotic components at the workbench and then you can craft unique manufactured components this seems like a really weird thing i can only hope that it's going to unlock a lot of awesome stuff and that majority of players because they've gotten sidetracked and gravitated toward the combat stuff like very few people have unlocked it that's the only thing i could hope and pray for that there's something waiting for us because if not if we invest in the stuff that interests us clearly at first what's waiting for us later like if i have nothing to work toward why do i want to level so yeah I, it could be better i think we kind of agree um some of this one perk is called planetary habitation it's all around building outposts, being able to build them on more extreme planets where there's uh, like freezing inferno, toxic atmospheres, etc. Have you guys gotten into outposts at all? This is something I actually ended up really liking in Fallout 4 um, to an extent. What did you guys think of that? Have you getting, gotten into outposts at all or invested in planetary habitation skill? No. Uh, nope. I have not even not even touched it. And that kind of says it all. Like you there's um a lot of things to there's a lot of things on paper, but in the end it's like only certain things catch your eye. 82 skills in Starfield spread across five distinct skill trees is what they talk about. So, mixed bag um, I think that the most weird stuff, I mean, we talked about things kind of being, why are they even in there in like a useless sense, but I do have to give a special shout out to the perk that unlocks a, uh, slide. Uh, there is a yeah. slide, um, have you unlocked it, Claire? I know, but I've thought about it. I got, part of me was like very interested don't, in don't it. Don't do it. Okay. Please don't do it. I wondered if it was going to be it's, dumb. <laughs> it's it's terrible. Um, I'm trying to find it here. Okay, here we go. Gymnastics is the is the perk. It, the first level unlocks the ability to combat slide. I thought this was going to be dope. The slide has very little momentum feel to it. I feel like it may be one of the worst ways to... Um, to feel in combat you're jumping around with this boost pack that's more than enough for me it gives me some options maneuverability and it's just fun the combat slide is n completely the opposite it doesn't last very long at all it doesn't seem to serve any purpose like okay i'm going around and i'm sliding and i'm thinking that i'm gonna do this for some, you know, I mean, why do you slide in Call of Duty or whatever? Like, let me move around a little faster, be a little harder to hit for the enemies. It doesn't feel good at all. The second level is to take 20% less fall damage. I made the mistake of doing that as well. If you have a boost pack on, fall damage isn't, you just have to tap the booster before you hit the ground to kind of give yourself that leeway, and that negates a lot of the fall damage. So it's... It's really crazy. The The fourth skill is increased jump height and running faster after combat sliding. And I'm just like, I'm done with it. I wish there was a way to re-spec and refund some of this stuff. Um, 
it, it it was bad. The other thing that I wanted to shout out with gastronomy, which is cooking things and getting better perks from food and drink. What are we doing? What are we doing here, guys? What are we doing? Have you have you done any of the persuasion system? I don't even know how it works. No. I go through it and I don't know how it works. David, did you ever use the persuasion? We have to pick a thing to say. Yeah, I actually did that quite a and bit. And then you get um, points. I didn't ever really entirely did you understand skills? Like what I was supposed to do because it has like the little plus numbers or different things. Yeah. So typically I would just save and save scum until I got there was all I wanted. But um, yeah, didn't tie it. Take, it takes a big man yeah. to to admit that. Oh yeah, that's, no, that's, that's what I do. That's, that's rough. <laughs> well, there's plenty to talk about with the game, and we will continue to do that. On our next episode of Starfield Explorers, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. It's been a blast. It's nothing but gas with these guys. I really love talking about the game with you all. Again, don't forget to leave a comment or question, and we will read uh, what you write on the post. Um, we really appreciate you being here. Again, Starfield Explorers, available everywhere you get your podcasts. We are on threads. <laughs> How is that going, Clay? How's not, Threads not going? Great. Is it not kill, great. Kill Twitter. Not great. Still out but there. we are there. And please join us for our next episode and be with us like my best buds here as we travel through the stars. Bye.